have people far, we have to do kids. But look, but look, but look, look who are asking. Look who are asking if the parking because must go. People that doesn't have the right information, they were misled in the first place by the deputy mayor. Because the deputy mayor was part of a, of a council that sat when the, and agreed that the contract was go through. When I left to go to Mexico, then he decided suddenly walk, walk out, out of a dream and started with the negativity of the parking meters. When we came back and we had a relook, an adjustment made to the contract, he sat in the council, he made adjustments, he recommended adjustments and was part of that. Right? So he had full participation, even with the bylaws, he had full participation as deputy mayor. He did not vote, but he participated in every discussion at the level of the council with regards to the contract, the adjustments to the contract, and the bylaws. So, if these are the leaders who are so dishonest that people are following, it's much to be desired. Be honest. I said that just so in my, in my speech, the deputy mayor should have been honest to say to the people, as, and he was dishonest again when he went to the program to say the contract is of 49 years. It is not. The contract is 20 years with review. And so he's so dishonest because he's bringing out the wrong information. But the meters are here. It's a reality after 50 years of it being in the law, it is now a real reality. And if all those people who are out here are supporting the no, no parking meter, pay up their taxes, paid up their taxes, the city would have been in a better position today. And if you go and take a census out there, how many of them owe the mayor and city council for many, many, many years and have not paid their taxes? So they're being dishonest, they're being unfair to this council, and they're not in support of it. And I expect they are they're most obvious, they're not of, of, of in, in assistance to help this government to move this place forward. But it's a democratic society and they have the right to do what they're doing. We will continue to make our voices heard. You understand me? Georgetown has, is, has suffered and is suffering tremendously because of the parking meters and we will continue to make our voices heard. And we hope the, and we wish the mayor the very best. Parking meter! Parking meter! Be rich in the powerful! Be rich in the powerful! Parking meter! Parking meter! Parking meter! Be rich in the powerful! 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 Right, the thing about it is to have everything done in a structured way, have something that people can accept and is not burdensome on them. No provision has, proper provision has been made for those people who cannot afford it. We are all residents or users of the city and we need to have some mechanism to address our concerns. This has been foisted on the people of, of Guyana. Guyana. I say Guyana because it's not just people who are in Georgetown, but people who come into Georgetown. It's a complicated system where you have to use a card and so not enough education has been done and the cost is prohibited. And when we think of parking meters, there was no consultation with civil society. There is still secrecy and mystery that clouds this whole deal. When we look at the percentage of what the main city council will receive, 20% is a minuscule amount. I think those who are supplying it must be laughing all the way to the banks. And when we look at the city, the city has been like a ghost town. While some may be actively boycotting this, there are many, many people who are from the working class that just can't afford it. Uh, the, the, the manner in which this metering arrangements have been put into place is totally unacceptable.